everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Today's webinar is titled The Access to Image Pro from Home. It is an installation, configuration, and overview webinar. My name is Nick Beavers, President of Media Cybernetics, and I am glad that you're able to join us today. Uh, today is the first in a series of webinars on using the new Image Pro extended free trial. And we want to share with you a bit of information about what we're going to talk about today. On our next slide, I want to go over with you that this is obviously for all of us um, interesting times. Uh, many people are experiencing technical and economic hardships, and uh, it is all a result of the current world events. We understand that our community is facing a transition, trying to work remotely, uh, needing to access image analysis software, and we decided that we really wanted to help out our users with offering an in-home extended trial of their image analysis platform named ImagePro. Now, this will be available through May 31st, 2020, and uh, we're really committed to tr making sure that our entire community has access to this for free, and we have opened up and extended uh, our support resources, and we are working hard to ensure that everyone on today's call or who may watch this on a future webinar, uh, will have access to our support services through our vast distribution partner network and through all of us here at Media Cybernetics to help get you up and running uh, and uh, be able to install, configure, and use the software at home uh, as successfully as you possibly can. Now, I want to talk about today what it is we're going to be going over. First of all, if you're new to Image Pro, um, the latest and greatest Image Pro is called Image Pro. Simple and straightforward, one name. You may have known of Image Pro from prior versions. Um, they were called Image Pro Plus. They were called Image Pro Analyzer, Image Pro Premiere, Image Pro Premier 3D, Image Pro Insight. A lot of different names, but all of them started with Image Pro. They were part of a family of products that has, for many years, offered powerful image analysis in a platform that allows you to capture, process, measure, analyze, and share your images and data. Now, today we're going to be talking about Image Pro version 10, and Image Pro is an excellent replacement for any of those prior products. The entire family offers a similar set of functionality, and today we're offering a platform that is a 64-bit image analysis platform that offers 2D image capture module. It offers a three-dimensional reconstruction, visualization, and analysis module. Uh, in addition to the 3D module, we offer a big data extension that allows you to open incredibly large data and visualize many megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes, whatever the size of your data, you can view it and you can analyze it. We also are offering um, the second to last icon there is a module by the name of the uh, hardware automation module. If you were using Image Pro Plus many years ago and um, maybe you're new to the, the latest Image Pro, this module is a partnership with Objective Imaging. Uh, and this was a wonderful partnership that we launched last year where we are now offering microscope control through our partnership with Objective Imaging. There is a, a wonderful new module that allows you to connect to a large variety of microscopes and all the automated components that are associated. And then last but not least, we, as we have for many years, offered uh, a wonderful new network module that allows you to have distributed licenses across an entire network. Uh, this allows you to have just a handful of licenses that can be accessed from anywhere across your network. And um, it offers a lot of flexibility. And in the latest and greatest with Image Pro here, it is a soft license that allows you to start install on a server as well, uh, offering the maximum flexibility and capability. What you'll notice, and, and uh, many of our presenters today will go over wonderful detailed information to help you get started. Um, using some of our older products that are Image Pro Plus and Analyzer, unfortunately in this time, you're not able to remote desktop into those products if they are in the office or they are in the lab, and, um, and it makes it a bit more challenging to access them. Whereas with Image Pro 10, we do open a lot of capabilities, and with a, a network license, um, you have that remote access available from either home or through remote desktop. So uh, interesting things uh, to go over today, lots of great details. 
Now, depending upon where you're coming from, um, what your work is, I want to just point out that ImagePro really is for everyone. We have uh, a standardized platform that opens up image analysis for many different industries. And so if you're joining us today and you're in the life science industry, manufacturing, uh, materials, natural resources, security, or pathology, there's capabilities of the software that are for you. And it is flexible enough and it's powerful enough to customize solutions that will save you time, save you money, and allow you to easily get your image analysis job done quickly. And even uh, in addition to these, we have a number of apps and macros that are available and customizations available that could be specific to the type of work that you're doing. Now, also, um, today's webinar will be recorded. So we are going to be offering everyone who is here today a uh, access to that recording later on. We'll send you an email with that recording. But also, anyone who wasn't able to make it live is welcome to find the webinar recording on the same page that you signed up for this webinar. Basically, from our homepage, you'll click on the, um, the extended free trial uh, banner, and that will take you to a website called mediaside.com slash remote access. There you'll see the recording uh, that we'll put up once it is edited and, and put up on the site um, this week. And then also, please be aware that there will be a next webinar in the series. Right now, it's scheduled for next week, Tuesday, April 22nd. And everyone on the webinar today will receive an email with that registration information. Additional to that, uh, you know, we understand that once you get the software installed, once you start using it, um, it's a powerful package that allows a lot of flexibility. Now, with flexibility can sometimes come the need for training and need for some guidance in how to best use that product. So we also want to offer a lot of instructional material. And so if you go to mediasidecom slash support slash image pro slash get started, you'll find a great resource that offers you um, option to download the quick start guide. Also, you can see here by this outline um, to download and install the, uh, the form, there's actually a form where people can go and um, talk about how the download can get advice from the community. And also there's a series of videos here as well to help guide you in specific features of the product. So make sure to check out that forum. And then lastly here, um, in terms of getting help and support, we want to guide you to the, the support page of Mediasci.com. Um, there's three different ways to get in touch with us, and we really want to uh, point out that we highly recommend you, you take advantage of our, our live community. Um, if you go to the forums.mediasite.com, there's a great community of users that can have uh, a lot of great answers for any questions you may have about using ImagePro. Um, if you need to get in touch with us, you can submit a support ticket from that page. And of course, if you'd like to reach somebody live, um, please go to that page, and you can have information available to you about contacting us depending upon your region. Uh, here we show the Americas, Europe, Middle East, and Africa region, um, and any phone numbers there. Uh, but if you are in uh, Asia or Japan, uh, you are able to have two other options as well, and I, I recommend you go there and take advantage of that. Now getting into what we're going to talk about today. So today I have a number of great topics, and uh, we're going to start off with downloading and installation. We're, we're then going to move into license activation configuring Image Pro 10, and uh, then we're going to pass over to our next presenter who's going to go through transferring macro projects, an Image Pro overview, and last but not least, let you know about the next webinar in the series. So with, with that, I'm going to pass the microphone off to our next presenter, Scott Reed, who is the head of our technical services department. Scott, it is all yours. Uh, thank you. Nick, can you hear me okay? I can hear you fine. Okay, great. Uh, my name is Scott Reed. I'm manager of technical services at Media Cybernetics. And today I'll be covering how to get your copy of the extended trial of Image Pro 10, to activate the license associated with it, and how to configure it uh, if you intend to use a camera or need to import old settings from an existing uh, installation. Uh, the very first thing you want to do is go to our website. And you can go directly to mediasci.com forward slash remote access. Or on our homepage, we have a, a large Get It Now option uh, that you can select. They both take you to the same location. Uh, on this page, there's a form that you can fill out to request your link to download this version of Image Pro 10. 
It also includes uh, important information and frequently asked questions about system compatibility uh, and requirements. Uh, so make sure that if you're working from home, the computer that you're using uh, meets the system requirements. All that information can be found on this page. Once you fill out the form and submit it, you'll receive an email. Usually that email arrives within, uh, within five minutes, but make sure to check your spam folder. Uh, some people have reported that after the request, an hour went by and they didn't see it and it's sitting in the spam folder. So uh, check that uh, and you'll see an image uh, like you see on the left of the screen that gives you the option to confirm your email address, which you'll have to do to receive this link. Uh, when you click that, you'll be taken back to our website and you can enter your email, prove you're not a robot, and hit submit. Uh, after that, you're taken directly to the download page. Uh, the very first thing, decision you have to make is which version of Image Pro 10 to get. We offer it in 32-bit and 64-bit. Uh, the preferred uh, version is the 64-bit version of Image Pro. We maintain a 32-bit for some older and legacy application applications, but it's not very popular. And unless you have a specific need to use 32-bit, it's recommended that you use a 64-bit installer. After you click on this, uh, usually if you're using uh, Chrome or uh, um, Internet Explorer, you'll see a download icon at the bottom of your browser uh, that's labeled setup64.exe. Uh, simply click that or run that and uh, follow the installation prompts to install Image Pro 10. This process can take five or 10 minutes depending on um, your internet connection and some other things that need to happen, uh, but give it some time and, and it should be pretty intuitive. After uh, you've installed the product, the next step is to activate the license. Now we've made this extended trial available via a cloud license, which we'll get into in, in a minute. Uh, to activate this, we'll need to launch what's called the license activation wizard. So if you're on a computer that already has had Image Pro installed, uh, maybe an existing trial license that's expired or uh, uh, an installation that you migrate a key uh, to, uh, when you launch it without a key, you'll receive the message at the top that says no valid license is found. Uh, that's okay. Simply click the cancel option and you'll be taking, taken directly to the license activation wizard. If this is a new installation, uh, and you just followed the previous steps, uh, the product will launch in a 14-day trial mode, but to activate the extended trial license, you'll want to go to the help menu and select license activation, as you see at the bottom. Uh, in either case, you'll be taken to the license activation wizard, which is a simple utility uh, that contains three screens. The first one is a welcome page. The next will give you the ability to select what license to use. We'll get into that in a minute. And the final page lets you review the licenses that are currently active, and you can even disable them if you, you intend not to use them or they make things a little bit difficult to navigate. So um, to activate the cloud license, which again is the preferred method, uh, and this information is will be available from the page that you click on the website. Everything you see on the left, including the download link, will be there for you. Uh, simply copy the link in step three, select the option that says attach to license server, paste that link into the box below and hit next. Once you've completed this, your copy of Image Pro will be connected to our cloud licensing server. And for the duration of this extended trial, you won't need to do anything else. Uh, if it needs to be extended or anything about it changes, that will all happen automatically. But some users might not have a reliable internet connection or for a variety of reasons might not be able to use this option. So we have made the extended trial available for download. Uh, on the page that you'll be taken to, you'll also have this information. Uh, you can download the bin file listed in step one. And on the license activation wizard, instead you'll select import license from file and point to the file that you download. Uh, this will work exactly the same way and extend your license for exactly the same amount of time. But if anything changes or this is extended for any period of time, you'll need to repeat these steps. We'll send out information about that if and when that occurs. So when you're finished, you should be able to go into Image Pro, go to the Help menu and select the option About Image Pro. 
and you'll be taken to this dialog that lets you verify your license. It will list the uh, date that the license ends. Uh, in this case, this, this screenshot was taken from an earlier version that's not accurate. This is good through May. Um, and it gives you the ability to select the licenses tab and activate or deactivate modules as you need. If you have any issues with installation along the way, obviously give us a call or send us an email and we can walk you through. Um, if you do not receive the email, uh, for example, some uh, security uh, applications or IT departments uh, will pre-filter emails and it won't even end up in your spam department. For any reason, if you don't get this link, just contact us directly and we'll get you everything that you need. So the next thing to do once Image Pro is properly uh, installed and licensed for capture is to configure uh, it to be used with a camera if needed or to import any old settings files that you may need for your work. First, we'll cover the camera uh, configuration. Before you can acquire images directly into Image Pro, you need to configure three things. One is Image Pro itself, and it needs to be properly licensed for capture. If you follow the instructions earlier, that's already taken care of. The next thing would be the Windows device driver for your camera. Uh, this identifies the camera to Windows and lets Windows interact with it. These drivers are provided by the camera manufacturer and are typically installed by whatever software is provided with your camera. So if you're using this camera in some other piece of software or you've installed the drivers from the manufacturer, uh, this step is also complete. If not, you'll want to contact them and get the Windows device drivers. The final thing that you need to configure is the capture interface, which connects Image Pro to your camera. To do that, you'll need to visit our website, <clears throat> pardon me, and you can go directly to mediasci.com forward slash support forward slash hardware, or you can visit the support section, select Image Pro uh, as the product and uh, link to the hardware support section from there. In either case, it will take you to the hardware support center, which allows you through a series of combo boxes on the left, select uh, the product that you're using, the operating system that you have, the camera manufacturer and the camera model. And when you, you're done selecting all of those options, you hit search, you should end up with one option and one option only. Um, in this case, I've downloaded uh, or configured uh, Image Pro to work with the Luminera 2-1. Uh, press the download button and you'll download a zip file. This file type is a little bit different than the executable um, that you downloaded earlier for Image Pro you'll need to extract the contents of this file before you run the installer. So after you've downloaded this, uh, select Open, and Windows will ask you if you'd like to extract the contents, select Yes. You can extract these anywhere, it does not matter. Um, once you've extracted it, you'll end up with something similar to what you see here, which is going to be the installer for the appropriate capture interface and release notes that tell you a little bit about it. Uh, double click on the capture interface installer and it will take you through a series of prompts. Uh, some of these, you want to read each one very carefully. Um, some of the capture interfaces have uh, requisites for the low level driver package that it works with. For example, uh, Luminera, this particular Luminera capture interface requires the Infinity driver package version 6.5.4 or later. Uh, most of the time, if you've downloaded uh, the driver package recently, this will be just fine. But if it's an older computer with an older configuration, you may need to double check that. At the very end of this installation process, you'll be given the option to go directly to the manufacturer's website and uh, download the appropriate version. Uh, of course, read the uh, license agreement very carefully. I'm sure all of you will. And accept the terms, press next. And you'll be asked to uh, install the capture interface uh, into Image Pro 10. Uh, a note here, if you have multiple versions of our product, if you have older versions of Image Pro Premiere or Image Pro Insight, you will see multiple destination folders. Uh, you can select any uh, or all of these, but Image Pro 10 is the one that we're most concerned with today. Uh, click Install, and uh, when you're done, again, you'll receive a message similar to what you see here asking you if you'd like to visit the manufacturer's website to download the driver package. Again, if you already have it installed and configured, there's no need to do this. But if you haven't, now would be the time. 
when you've installed the device drivers, you can visit Windows Device Manager. You can access this utility built into Windows by typing Device Manager into your Windows 10 search bar uh, or by going to Computer Management and selecting it from there. In either case, you should have a uh, hive that says Imaging Devices and your camera should appear in that hive. Sometimes it, it might be in a different um, location. For example, some Leica cameras will install into their own uh, Device Manager hive but most of them will appear here under imaging devices. Uh, if it has a red X or uh, exclamation point next to it, uh, there's an issue that needs to be solved. I would contact the manufacturer. They, they're the best source of information for configuring the Windows device driver. When this is all done, uh, you can launch Image Pro and you will, should have full control of your camera for preview and acquire. If you need uh, further help with installation or configuration of your camera, again, give us a call or send us an email, we're here to help you with that as well. The next thing you may need to configure are settings. If you're an existing Image Pro user, chances are you've created calibrations or measurement files or ROIs, a variety of different things that you'll want to move to this uh, new installation uh, to continue your work. What I've listed here is the four uh, application folders, four folders that are maintained by Image Pro. Program Files folder uh, listed in Program Files contains the program executable and all the related DLLs. There isn't much that you'll need to copy over here. Uh, this is just for reference. Shared documents are documents that Image Pro maintains that are shared among all users on the computer. Uh, report templates, uh, some default macros, demo images, things like that. Personal documents are kept in your My Documents folder or the Documents Library for the user. That's the default location uh, where Image Pro will prompt you to save your images, your macros, and most configuration files. There's an additional folder called Internal Data uh, where we store a number of application maintained files that might be useful, so we'll cover those in a little bit as well. To move these files, it's pretty easy. You just want to identify them on the existing installation, copy them to a USB drive, move them to the new computer, and write them to the exact location that you've copied them from. If you have remote access to the computer that you are uh, copying these files from, feel free to copy them directly. Using a USB drive is recommended as the easiest way to do this. Uh, an important note about this is that it's recommended before you copy these files that you rename the existing versions uh, the easiest way to do that is with a dot, changing the file extension to dot .backup. It easily identifies it in the list of files as a backup version. And uh, this will allow you to revert to an, uh, the default version in case something goes wrong or you want to return to that default state. The two primary folders for all of the files that you may need to copy are in the configuration files folder, which is listed here, and the application data folder. Uh, again, all of this information will be provided in a PDF uh, along with the download information and licensing information. The types of files that you may need to uh, uh, copy are provided in that document as well. Uh, for example, um, spatial calibrations. Uh, if you've created a calibration and you want to copy that over to the new system so you can continue to receive your measurements and calibrated units, you'll want to co uh, copy over the spatial calibrations file. Here we list the feature, the file that uh, you need to move, the format, and this is important if you have any security uh, issues or virus protection um, that don't like particular types of files. XMP, binary, and XML are usually files that are suspicious. Uh, so we've listed the file format here so you can at least temporarily um, circumvent those security protocols. And, uh, and then we've listed the location. Again, this information will always, uh, is also listed in the uh, PDF that will be provided with the download. Uh, capture settings files, if you're using a camera, you can copy the .icq file directly over, load it, and your capture environment should be identical to uh, your existing one. Uh, data collector measurements, you may have created your own measurements for data collector, intensity calibration, even your learning segmentation recipe files can all be copied over. And again, uh, the chart included in the file will list uh, the feature, the file to move, format, and its location. 
And as I've said a couple of times, if you have any questions about any of these at all, uh, or want to get in touch with us uh, about how to copy it over or how to use it, in some cases you may need to create uh, a new calibration file. Just get a hold of us and we can um, provide you with that information, some of which is already available on our website. Um, and uh, I saw a question pop up in the corner. Uh, I'm about to pass it over to uh, Andrew Barlow, who will cover how to move macros and apps. So uh, without further ado, I will pass control to Andrew. Thank you, Scott. OK, before I start, can I just check that you can hear me, Scott? Loud and clear. OK, thank you. OK, um, my name is Andrew Barlow. I work with Scott in the Technical Services Department. And my topic today are going to be transferring macro projects. And I'm going to give you a quick overview of Image Pro 10 if you're new to the product. So let's make a start on macros. So here we see a simple macro. And all this macro does is execute a count on an open image. Now it opens measurement options. And this is a really good idea when we execute a macro. We want to make sure we're always executing the same count. We're always doing the same experiment or being consistent. But when transferring macros to a different computer, we need to ensure that the configuration files move with the macro so the macro will continue to work seamlessly. So how do we achieve, achieve this? So here you can see my macro is in my project, which I've called Andrew's project. And I'm going to move this by using the package function. So here I'm looking at the project workbench where we work with macros. And if I go to the file menu in the workbench and look at the package options, you'll see I have three different packaging options. I can package my project as a project package. I can package it as a read-only package, or I can package it as an encrypted package. In this case, I'm going to package it as a project package. This works, by the way, both for moving macros to a new computer, maybe at your home, and also for sharing macros or macro projects with colleagues and collaborators. When I choose the package option, I can then save my package to any location on my computer. You can see here that I have on my desktop a folder called Macros to Moon. And I'm going to put my package project into that folder. And if I look at the content of that folder, after I've done that, I can see that my projects have been packaged as IPX files. And this package contains all the files that are needed by a macro. And this includes measurement option files, learning classifiers, data collector types, features manager files, and other types that Scott mentioned earlier in the presentation. On the new computer, I'm going to take my packaged projects and I'm going to copy them into the scripts folder, which you'll find in your documents folder. You'll find an image pro 10 folder, which contains a subfolder called scripts. And that's where we need to copy our project, our packaged projects to. On the new computer, I can open the package from the project workbench. So if I select file open from the project workbench and select my packaged project, it should open, and all of my macros from that project should run perfectly. So here I've executed my count nuclei, pro, uh, my count nuclei macro, and it's counted my nuclei using my configuration file. So any files that are needed in the macro project are stored from the package, and everything just works. And it's worth noting that you can edit package projects, but if you want to repackage it, uh, you have to add new configuration. You may have added new configuration files to a new macro. You must first unpack it. In order to do that, from the project workbench file option, we can choose save, and there under save, we have the option to unpack project package. Once unpacked, you can then repackage it with your new configuration files. It's also worth noting that only files saved in the default locations are added to packages. So uh, Scott mentioned the default location. It's always wise to try and save your configuration file in the default location, which is in Documents or Find Image Pro 10 Configuration Files folder. And if you've saved configuration files in other locations, you can still restore the functionality when you've transferred a macro project. If I take a look at this macro, 
and I look at my open op options command, if I right click on that and select properties, you can see that it's going to display where the macro is going to search for my configuration file. If I click on that option, you can see there's a small ellipsis on the right hand side. If I click on that, I can point the image pro to the new location of my configuration file and the functionality of my macro will be restored. Okay, so let's move in macros. Now let's move on to a quick overview of Image Pro 10. And this is really just a sneak preview of what we're going to cover in our upcoming webinars. So the first question you might have if you're new to Image Pro 10 is, what's it for? And there are many answers to this question. It can be for fairly, for fairly simple but important functionalities such as point-to-point -point distance measurements. Or you can use it to make personalized image analysis apps capable of detailed workflows. And here's an example of a fiber in gel bead essay app with its own user interface and a complex workflow uh, for angiogenesis analysis. Image Pro can be all points in between these two extremes. So Image Pro is a powerful and versatile image analysis software. So the first thing you're going to want to do, of course, is open your own images. But to do this, go to the file menu. If you've had recent documents open, you'll see a list of recent documents displayed for you. And if you go down to the open option, you'll see there are several uh, open options. Let's just run through what each of these does. The first one opens an image. This may be a single frame or a multidimensional image set, such as a Zeiss CZI image. The next option will allow you to open multiple individual frames as a sequence. The Open Set from Files option allows you to open multidimensional image sets from individual frames. So you may be interested in making multi-channel image set or a multi-plane uh, volume. And the next option opens a multidimensional image set from a folder of individual, from several folders of individual frames. The most commonly used option is going to be Open Images, the simplest and easiest option. When you've opened your image, Image Pro will automatically read and apply spatial calibrations. So here I can see if I look at the information bar at the bottom of the application, let's just magnify that, we can see that Image Pro has read and applied a spatial calibration. So any measurements made on this image will be made in the correct spatial units. In some cases, you'll open images that don't have an associated calibration file. An image pro will warn you about that. So again, if we check the status bar at the bottom, we see a red warning that this image is uncalibrated. If I wish to apply a calibration, I go to what will either be called the home or the capture tab, depending on whether you've enabled the capture license. And here I can find calibration tools. And like all tool groups, if I mouse over the group of tools, I'll see a little question mark, which when I click on it, will show me context help. And here I can see the help on how to make and apply a calibration to my image. At this point, I'd like to also draw your attention to our website. So if you click on the support link, and then click on the Image Pro 10 link, and scroll down, you'll find a link to tutorials and webinars. Here you'll find a library of useful webinars and tutorials in video format. You can see here that I've applied a search for calibration. I found some instructional videos on how I build and apply calibrations. So please do make use of this facility. The next feature I'd like to outline is point-to-point -point measurements. You find this in the Measure tab. And here we find the Direct Measurements tools, where we can apply, or where we can make distance, area, and angle measurements. I'm interested in the line tools. If you take a closer look, you'll see we have four different line tools available to us. There's a freehand line tool, a point-to-point -point line tool, polyline tool, and an auto-trace polyline tool. And I'm going to show you now how to use the point-to-point -point tool. So with that tool selected, if I click on my image, I make the first point of a line, and I can then click on a second point, and a line is added to my image. If I click on the option to show the data table, you see in the table the length of my line. I can add as many point-to-point -point lines as I wish, and each one will be added sequentially into my measurements table. 
The next feature I'd like to show you is segmentation. Segmentation being the separation of objects of interest from the background and the measurement of those objects. We do this in the count size tab. Here you can see I've opened uh, a Zeiss CZI file and it's got four channels. So it's being displayed in the composite view. On the right hand side here, we can see the composite view controls. So these allow me to maybe change the lookup table that's been applied to each channel and change the contrast that's being applied to each channel. Now I can't actually segment any objects whilst I'm looking in the composite view. I need to deselect the composite view and let image know which channel I'm interested in segmenting. But to do that, there's a little button beneath the composite controls, which will allow me to deselect the composite view. And that's how it looks. If I select that, you'll see that I have a navigation tool at the bottom of my image that allows me to select each of my images individually. You'll also notice that the segmentation tools at the left-hand side of the count size tab become enabled. And there are four of them. I have an auto bright option, an auto dark option, a manual segmentation option, and a smart segmentation option. Smart segmentation is our machine learning segmentation option that we'll be outlining in one of our upcoming webinars. In this case, I've selected the auto bright option. And Image Pro has automatically selected a threshold that separates bright objects from a dark background. It's also showing me a threshold tool on the right hand side if I want to manually adjust the threshold that Image Pro has set. If I hit the count button, each of these objects is selected and measured. And if I show the data table, I can see that I have a table of objects. If you're interested in finding dark objects against a bright background, you can select the auto dark segmentation option. And again, by pressing count, you'll get a table of objects which are automatically selected and measured. The important thing to remember about count size is first to select your segmentation option and then select count. And after these two clicks, you'll be rewarded with a measurement table of objects. You may, of course, wish to refine your, uh, your segmentation. You may wish to apply any number of the large range of different measurements that we can make of each object. You may wish to edit the range of objects by perhaps invalidating objects which are too small to be genuine objects or too large. You may want to apply an automated splitting of joined objects or change the way objects are displayed. To go through these options, and we'd like to invite you to our upcoming webinars. The first one will be next week on the 21st of April at 1 p.m. EST. That will be on segmentation. And the next webinar after that will be a week later on the 20th. We'll be covering more advanced analysis, so please do join us. And that brings me to the end of my contribution. So I'd like to hand you back now to, to Nick. Thank you, Andrew. I appreciate that. Um, hopefully, everything that we've gone over today has been helpful for getting started with your extended trial of Image Pro. Um, as both Scott and Andrew demonstrated, there are resources available to you on our support pages. Uh, and we also will be continuing this webinar series, so please be on the lookout for the upcoming emails that will be sent out to you about the uh, next webinar on Tuesday, April 22nd. Um, as a reminder, today's webinar will be uh, sent out to you. Uh, the recording has, um, I think, a great opportunity for <laughs> pausing and re-watching some sections if there was something that you want to uh, review again. So I uh, recommend that you take advantage of that. Um, next, I want to just make sure everyone is aware that everything that you've seen here, um, there is, again, information on this Getting Started page. So we want to direct you that, to that again. And then lastly, we also want to just mention that if there is any questions that you have, uh, a number of great, great questions have come through already, um, you're welcome to ask the community who always has great feedback, um, submit a support ticket to our support team or contact us live. Um, with all of that, I did want to say that if anybody had a question that came through today uh, and we weren't able to get to it, we'll, we'll, we'll be following up with each of you afterward individually. And as always, you're welcome to reach out to us and we'd be happy to help in any way we possibly can. Uh, if you do work with a local distribution partner and uh, in your region that is 
where you have purchased your ImagePro software in the past or you've worked with one of those representatives, uh, we would absolutely recommend that you continue to work with them if uh, you have a great relationship with them as we are um, continuing to train all of our partners to ensure that they have the latest and greatest knowledge and information about all the products. Uh, but as usual, we also welcome all of your questions directly as well. Thank you for your time today. We really appreciate all of you um, taking time out of your day to uh, be a part of the webinar. We look forward to seeing you next week on Tuesday for the next series where we're going to dive in deep into smart segmentation, which will demonstrate a machine learning algorithm that can, in a very automated and intelligent and powerful way, uh, extract the regions of your image that are of interest to you based upon input in a variety of different ways. It's a very powerful tool that we recommend if you haven't used, definitely sign up so that you can learn more about it. Um, if you're coming from an old Image Pro Plus, Image Pro Analyzer, Image Pro Premier product, and Image Pro 10 is new to you, um, we definitely hope that you will um, take advantage of all these resources and reach out if you do run into anything that is um, challenging. And if you find that you are stuck on any step, uh, please, again, we, we have no problem reaching, allowing you to reach out and help you walk through each of those steps again. So thanks for your time today, and we look forward to seeing you on Tuesday. Goodbye, everyone.